I'm glad to see you were able to find this video. I'd also be glad to hear from you. Let me know what you want to see or what you're having trouble with so that I can make content that's useful and meaningful to you. With that said, let's jump right in, shall we? So our previous video, we took up the example questions for the working with signs portion of the order of operations video series that we're doing. And I really do suggest that if you did miss the working with signs module that we did, you go back and watch it. The lecture video, we went into detail on how you would actually handle having two different signs beside each other. And we went through a bunch of examples in our previous video on Thursday. This is an area where people struggle and people often make mistakes. You can do every other step of the orders of operations with ease. You could get every other thing correct, but if you get the signs wrong, it will give you a wrong answer. And the signs are hard to find whenever you're trying to backtrack and figure out where your mistakes are. They're easy to drop. They're easy to convert incorrectly. You really do need to have this understanding of how signs work in your pocket. It just needs to be something that's fluid and you know it. And I feel terrible for harping on it because it's it sounds like I'm just lecturing, but this is the area I find most people have trouble with. And that's why I pulled it out, even though it's not really specific for the orders of operations. I pulled it out because I wanted to make sure we had a chance to look specifically at signs and how signs work. Enough with that, let's go ahead and start looking at today's video. So today's video is brackets, and again, it's part of the Orders of Operations video series. And if we go back and we think of our acronym, BEDMIS, B was actually the very first letter. So yes, brackets is actually the first step in the Order of Operations. The reason we started with addition and subtraction, even though they are the last step in the Order of operation, we did it first because in theory, you should feel comfortable with addition and subtraction. They should not be new to you. And so then I was able to go ahead and show you the methodology for solving an equation. And then our second video week, we started looking at the signs because I really wanted to make sure that we had a strong fundamental understanding of how signs work. So that way, when once we start moving in and we actually start looking at the orders of operations, we know how to handle the basics. We know how to solve an equation and the methodology to follow it, and we know how to handle signs that we're going to be dealing with throughout the equation. So let's get in and dig into brackets. As I mentioned, brackets is the first step. This is the first thing you do. And to solve your brackets, you actually want to solve the contents of the brackets. So what you're going to do is you're going to look in your equation and say, hey, do I have any brackets? And if you find any brackets, you're going to start over and you're going to ask again, hey, are there any brackets inside my bracket? If there is, you're going to do it again until there are no more brackets. Now, generally, you don't usually go more than two, ch ch two children deep So, uh, for, for the most part. But I mean, in theory, it could go on forever. So you want to look at your brackets, and when you find a bracket, you want to solve the contents of the brackets, always starting with the innermost bracket. So if you have a bracket and there's a child bracket, you solve the child bracket before you do the outer bracket. It'll make sense when we start looking at examples. Something else to consider when you're solving your brackets, once you've solved the contents of your brackets, sometimes you're going to have a number right next to the bracket. So on the left of the bracket, of the opening bracket, there's going to be a number. We did see this in the signs video, but instead of having a number, we just had a negative sign. If you have just something beside the bracket, what you have to do is expand out the bracket. And to expand out the bracket, you actually want to take the whatever is outside of the bracket. So last week it was just a negative sign. In this case, we're going to start seeing some numbers on the outside. You're going to take that number and expand it by everything that's in the brackets. Okay, so it'll make sense once we start going through some examples. But remember, there are, are two real steps when it looks when we're looking at the brackets portion of orders of operations. You want to make sure you're solving the contents of the brackets first, always doing the most inner bracket first. 
and then you want to make sure you're expanding out your brackets. So if there's something on the outside, making sure you pull that into your bracket. And I just have this little note here, keep an eye on your signs. Yes, we're not working with signs where we've left that to last week. This is brackets, but you will always have signs in your operations and they're going to get you, so keep an eye on them. So let's look at our first example. We have 7 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2. And if we look, we can see that there's two sets of brackets. And the first thing we want to do when we're solving an equation is solve your brackets. So let's look. The first bracket has 7 plus 8. There are no children brackets inside of it, so we can go ahead and just solve it. So 7 plus 8 is equal to 15. And then we have to just drop the rest of the equation. So we're bringing down the plus plus the other bracket, 3 plus 2. So now we want to clean up our equation. We want to make sure that uh, we can get rid of the two brackets around the 15. That's not needed anymore. And we can go ahead and solve the other set of brackets. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So now we have a line of 15 plus 5, which is equal to 20. And there's no further operations left, so we can get a final answer of 20. So what we did is we made sure we went through the first bracket first, and then we went and did the second bracket. And there were no child brackets to solve in this case, so it was pretty straightforward. Once we had cleared off our brackets, we can go ahead and start doing the addition. Okay, so let's look here. We have a whole bunch of brackets. So let's look. First off, we can see that there's a bracket 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 doesn't have any brackets inside of it, so we can go ahead and just solve that. So we have 5, and we drop the rest of the equation down. So now if we look at this next equation, there's actually nested brackets, right? So we have the opening bracket, 15 minus, and then there's another set of brackets. So we want to do the child bracket first. So we're going to write the rest of the equation down and just solve the contents of the child bracket. So we're going to bring 5 minus 15 and the minus sign and bring that 6 down. So now if we look at the equation, we can see that we have a minus sign directly next to the 6. And we did this in our last week videos. How do you handle the 6? Now in this case, again, it's just for legibility purposes, so we can just drop the 6, the, the brackets around the 6, or what we're actually doing is actually expanding the 6 by the negative 1. Because if there you have just a sign sitting next to a bracket, it's essentially a 1. So it's a negative 1 or a positive 1 if it had been a positive sign. So what we're essentially saying is it's negative 1 times 6. So we can reduce that to being negative 6. Okay. So now we have a new equation of 5 minus and then more brackets. 15 minus 6. So we are starting to reduce the amount of brackets we have. We're cleaning it up as we go along. But again, we want to solve the contents of the brackets first. So now we have to do 15 minus 6. We're going to bring down the 5 and the minus sign, and then we'll just solve the brackets. 15 minus 6, that's 9. Now we have a negative sign again right next to our 9. A negative sign is essentially just a negative 1. So we can go ahead and say negative 1 times 9, which is equal to negative 9. Now we only have subtraction left, so we can go ahead and solve our equation. 5 minus 9 is equal to minus 4, giving us a final answer of negative 4. So this one was a little more complicated. We had some child brackets. The thing to keep in mind is always do one bracket at a time. So we glanced at the equation. We saw that the first thing there was an a set of brackets. We looked at that brackets. Are there any children inside of it? There were none, so we could go ahead and solve it. Then we would just drop the rest of the equation. When we found that there was brackets on the far side and that they had children brackets, we only solved the contents of the child brackets and then brought the rest of the equation down. So that's the thing to remember. Sometimes you're going to drop the equation on the left. Sometimes you're going to drop the equation on the right. It depends on where your brackets are and what operation you're actually solving for. So try to keep track of that. Example C. Now we have one with nothing beside it. It's directly beside a bracket, 2 plus 3. So first things first, you want to solve for your brackets. So inside of our brackets, 
it's just 2 plus 3, there are no children brackets, we can go ahead and just say that's 5. So now we have 1 times 5. We know it's a multiplication because the 1 is right beside without anything separating it, so it's essentially 1 times 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Right, so this isn't any different than if it had just been a plus sign. If it had just been a plus sign, it's essentially the same as saying one, a positive 1 times the content of the brackets. The reason you're going to put a 1 instead of a plus sign in this kind of an equation is because numbers by default are positive, and it's easier to read 1 bracket 2 plus 3 than plus sign bracket 2 plus 3. Okay? It's a little bit tricky, but you'll get it the more you do some. So our final answer here was 5. Now this equation, it looks complicated. There's a lot of brackets, but we're only solving one operation at a time. So we're going to start scanning our equation, and we're going to look for brackets. So we see 2 minus, oh, there's a bracket. OK, so let's look in our bracket. Is there any other brackets inside of our brackets? Let's see, we have negative 1 bracket. Oh, yes, there is a child bracket. So we want to solve the child bracket first. OK, so let's look in our new bracket. Is there any brackets within here? We have 2 plus 3. No, there are no child brackets in this equation. So we can go ahead and solve this first. That means we're going to drop all of the equation around it. So the 2 negative opening bracket negative 1 all is coming down on the left. And then on the right, we're going to bring the closing bracket, plus sign, and then the bracket 5, bracket 7, minus 9, and the two brackets, right? So all we changed was the inside bracket where it said 2 plus 3 is now equal to 5. Okay, so now we can go ahead and say, um, let's start again at the beginning of the equation. 2 minus a bracket, negative 1. Nothing beside the bracket, 5. So we do need to clean up that 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 1 and multiply it by 5, right? Because what we want to do is if you have a number directly beside a bracket, you have to expand out the bracket. So negative 1 times 5. And we drop the rest of the equation. We brought down the left side, which was 2 negative, and then the bracket. And then on the other side, after the negative 1 times 5, we brought down the rest of the equation. We brought down plus sign, 5, 7 minus 9. OK, so now we want to solve inside the first bracket. So we're going to solve negative 1 times 5. Negative 1 times 5 is equal to negative 5. OK, so again, we start at the beginning of the equation. Are there any brackets? So 2 minus, oh, there's a bracket. So now we look at our equation, what's in the brackets? Right now, we've already reduced it, so all that's left is a negative 5. We can look and say, what's beside our bracket? Oh, it's a negative sign. Well, a negative sign is just essentially a placeholder for negative 1. So we can say negative 1 times negative 5, and that uh, is positive, right? To two negative signs beside each other, it gets converted to a plus sign. So now we have 2 plus 5 and we're dropping the rest of the equation. OK, so now we start at the beginning again. Are there any brackets? So we look, 2 plus 5 plus, oh, there's another opening bracket. OK, so let's look. Inside this bracket, we have 5, and then another opening bracket. OK, that means there's a child bracket. Is there any brackets inside of our child bracket? Let's take a look. 7 minus 9. Nope, there are no brackets inside of this one, so we can go ahead and solve the contents of the child bracket. So we're going to bring everything on the left down and just solve the 7 minus 9. That gives us minus 2. So now if we look at our equation again, 2 plus 5 plus bracket, and then we have 5, nothing in between, it's just the bracket, negative 2. That converts to 5 times negative 2, right, because we want to expand out the bracket. It's 5 times negative 2. So let's show that out in our equation. 2 plus 5, and we want to solve the contents of the bracket. So it's 5 times negative 2. That equals negative 10. Now we can go ahead and clean up our line again. We have 2 plus 5 plus a negative 10 plus and a minus beside each other. 
because they're different, that gets turned into a negative sign. So now we have a line of 2 plus 5 minus 10. So now the brackets are all gone. We can go ahead and just start solving the equation like we normally did. So 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, and we drop the rest of the equation. 7 minus 10 is equal to minus 3, giving us a final answer of negative 3. So this example, it's a little bit long, and I, can, I did it intentionally because I wanted to give you an example that had lots of child brackets and it w had some length to it. The reason for that is because I wanted to make sure you felt comfortable with a long equation. It doesn't matter how many more brackets I would have added. I could have gone in deeper, having children within children, or I could have more siblings, having them at the same level. Or I could just have different operations within the equation. It doesn't make the equation any more difficult. It just makes it longer. As long as you're solving one step at a time, it's the same amount of effort. It's the same amount of work. So just remember, you're always solving one operation at a time and always go back to the beginning of your equation, or to your acronym rather. Always start to look, are there any brackets? Is there any exponents? Is there division or multiplication? Is there addition and subtraction? As long as you continue to keep doing that every time you go into a new bracket or a new uh, uh, exponent, it will make more sense as we look at exponents, but always keep checking. Are there any brackets? Are there any exponents? Always make sure you got them in the right order and it will come easily. It doesn't matter how long the equation is. So, quick little summary of what we did. Always do the innermost brackets first. So you look at your equation and you say, is there a bracket? And then you start over. Is there another bracket? Is there another bracket? And you start with the innermost one first and you just drop the rest of the equation to the left and to the right down, depending on where your inner child bracket is. If there is a number directly beside a bracket, you have to expand out your bracket. So what that means is you're taking whatever is on the outside of the bracket and you're multiplying that into your bracket. Okay. If there is a sign next to your bracket, what you're doing is you're saying negative or positive 1 times the content of your bracket. Keep track of where your brackets open and close. This can get tricky, especially on like our last equation where there was a lot of brackets. What some people do to keep track of their brackets is they use the different shapes in the brackets. So the parent might have the circle and then a child might have the curly one and then a child of the curly one might have square brackets. So you can easily identify where brackets start and close because it's critical, right? We want to make sure we're always solving the child bracket first and working our way out. Always keep track of your signs and keep track of what content is in what brackets. You can do it, I'm sure. Just stay calm when you're looking at it. Don't get overwhelmed by how deep an equation is or how long an equation is. Here are some example equations that we can go through. I do suggest you go through them. Take the time to write them all out. I will always suggest you do them by hand. Doing them by hand it just helps with the ability to retain the information, the methodology of being able to solve the equation. And also, it doesn't hurt to say it when you're going through it. Are there any brackets? Are there any exponents? Are there any division and multiplication? Or is there any addition and subtraction? In this case, all of the examples will have brackets, will have addition or subtraction. There are no exponents. There's no division or multiplication because we haven't spoken about it yet. The only multiplication you're going to have is expanding out your brackets. But that's because it's part of brackets, not because it's part of the multiplication step. I do suggest you take the time to go through this. We will take this up on Thursday, which is when we will have our next video. It gives you all of Wednesday. And if you have any problems, let me know. You can put a comment in the comment section, or you can send me a message. Um, you can tweet me, put it on Instagram, however you want to reach out to me. If you're having trouble before the Thursday video, feel free to reach out. You know I love to hear from you, so if you have any questions or any future topic ideas that you would like to see, let me know. Reach out to me in whatever channel suits you best, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.